What's up guys and gals? My name is Splattercat. We are here at the Nerd Castle with the next episode, well, of Mountain Blade Warband. I was gonna say, well, like, I should be studying right now. I'm being a terrible student. I have an exam in like an hour and a half, and instead I'm hanging out with you guys here at the Nerd Castle because, frankly, it's just more appealing. It's way more appealing. Tests suck. But anyways, what we need to do today, I think we're gonna pick a fight. We're gonna pick a fight today with the Kirgi Kanate. I think it's about time. We've had about two episodes of downtime where we haven't really been doing much. And I really think this is gonna be like the only military force that I'm gonna need in order to take the castle. This should be fairly sufficient, but let's go ahead and pick a fight with somebody. Yeah, let's go ahead and marshal all the forces. Ooh, Clargus is grumpy with me about something. What are you, what are you grumpy about, Clargus? Okay, so what do I have with me here? I have 106. I have 39. I have 40. Okay. So we don't have like the best army with us, but we have something. Another 52 right there with Clargy Boy. Alright, so let's ride down into Kurgi territory and see what kind of trouble we can get ourselves into here. We might be able to snipe Ikimer with a fairly tiny army. And so now the name of the game is just waiting for some villagers to show up. And then we beat them up and take what they have. Oh, nobody liked that. They were all grumpy with me. And so now Stamar is here. And what we want to do now is we want to besiege this mother before anything terrible happens. And so do we have a siege tower or do we have ladders? I can't tell. It says ladders, I think. So we'll make ladders. We have four hours. Hopefully the king doesn't show up. This could be really, really bad for us. But let's lead our assault. And hopefully today we'll get ourselves another large city. Although, oh yeah, I remember this castle. This castle is highly suspect. This is the one where they spawn on the wall in the corner over there. It's going to take us a little while to breach this one. I was a little bit... There's a reason nobody's attacking this castle. This castle is a little bit of a conundrum. A slight enigma, if you will. And unfortunately, we have... Really? It's not like I didn't see you just attempt that for zero damage, sir. Whew. Got him. There we go. Nothing like a good bow duel. We're just sitting there, just kind of like. Uh, oh, -boo. <laughs> I don't know why that was so entertaining, but that was. For whatever reason, that was pleasurable on multiple, like on all accounts. I mean, there's multiple accounts here. There's also multiple barons and lords, but just saying, that was way more pleasurable than I figured it would be. Is that guy dead? Oh no, he's alive. He's quite alive. Okay, well let's. Ah! Balls! What are you guys? Stop that! Stop flanking me and shooting me. I hate it. I'm standing in the wide open on purpose so that I can look like a badass, and you guys are just ruining it. It is ruined. Ooh, right in the neck. Call that the vampire shot. Some of these guys I can clear out before they actually get to the fight. Sir, stand still while I try and shoot you, sir. Sir, sir, we're going to need you to cease and desist. Sir, sir, we're going to need you to hold on. All right, I'm going to radio this in, sir. And if it comes back clear, you'll be all right. But I'm going to need you to hang tight. Sit down on the curb, sir. Sir, sit down on the curb. Oof. So now I back off into the supremo coverage of my own lines while also attempting to keep myself from being slaughtered or slogtered as some people like to prefer to say it. You can say it however you like. I'm not one of those people who's picky on pronunciation, but there are those people out there who are like, excuse me, it's pronounced patad. And you're just like, okay, it's patad. I actually don't know how to say that word either. Somebody told me the other day that you hoist yourself up by your own petard, which basically means to blow yourself up with your own mind, which doesn't that sound like, I don't think minds hoist you into the air. I mean, I guess I suppose they do if you really want to take it down to like physics, but a hoist, I always think there's like a pulley involved when somebody talks about hoisting. But anyways, blowing yourself up with a mine 
is to hoist yourself up. Blowing yourself up with your own mind is to hoist yourself up by your own petard. Apparently it comes from Shakespeare. I did like a full 30 minutes of just kind of research after this person used this sentence, and it was Stijo, by the way, in case you were wondering. But anyways, he'll probably show up in the comments right after this and be like, yeah, that was me. I inspired a diatribe. And like, indeed you did, sir. Indeed you did. We don't appear to be taking the wall. We do, however, appear to be dealing all kinds of damage to our enemy. I actually think I'm going to retreat for now. And so we've lost 12 there, 47 there. That's a pretty bad run. And then we will prepare ladders and attack the wall one more time. The reason I did that is because all of my archers were out of arrows. So if you were wondering, I tend to cheese my way through these sieges. You guys had suggested that I do it, and I was trying to avoid doing anything cheesy while I was playing through the game because there are a lot of ways to cheese this game and like mess with the AI and confuse it. But anyways, I was going to avoid it, but really, I don't feel like sending in dozens and dozens of archers to die up against the walls just to reset it the manual way. So we are going to be using the retreat, kind of the spear point. You go in, you come back, you go in, you come back, you go in, you come back, you finish, and then that's the end of the whole experience. You roll over, grab a blankie, sleepy time. And so, what do we have remaining? On the plus side, it did give me some more arrows, too. I'm going to shoot that guy because he looks like an asshole. Him and his Lama Lama Liminar. His Liminar Lamalar. Ooh, there it is. Some people say that it's easier to aim in first person mode. And so I'm going to talk about that right now. So my problem with first person mode is that the arrow you fire in first person mode actually comes from slightly above your bow. And I think some people just adjust to that and I'm sure that I could as well. But it just bothers me. And so firing in third person mode, it also like kind of reminds me of Siphon Filter. Whatever happened to Siphon Filter? That was the game that like when I was a kid, Siphon Filter was the shit. Like, if you had Siphon Filter at your house, I was coming to hang out at your house because on the PlayStation, you oh my god, it was so awesome. Although it used that weird lock-in mode where you would like lock onto enemies. And I remember there was I think it was in Siphon Filter two or three. Where the first mission you like parachute into a snow level with a bunch of rocks and you gotta shoot dudes from the air while you're parachuting in great series of games and then unfortunately I think they had like one bad I think somebody tried to revive siphon filter I don't recall but I, I distinctly remember like game pro or a game informer cover when I was standing in line like a year three four years ago maybe where I think somebody had tried to reinvigorate how are we losing so many huskarls to low-level troops this is quite frankly insulting anyways somebody I think somebody I saw the front cover and I think somebody had tried to reinvigorate the series but I don't think it had gone over very well. Not quite as well as like the Tomb Raider reboot, which somebody gifted me that game. I may play it on the channel. I don't know. If you guys are interested in seeing me play the new Tomb Raider, it wouldn't be one of those things that I don't think it's going to like have a whole lot of people watching it aside from people at the Nerd Castle. So if you guys really, really, really wanted me to play Tomb Raider, I could probably record it out in some of my free time once school ends. I'm going to try and do like three to five episodes a day once school ends. I'm going to try and do YouTube full time. It's what I'd really like to try. I don't know if it'll work out that way. But I am going to try and do YouTube as a full-time job once school ends. And I think I could make it work if I do like three to five episodes a day. Depending. But it's going to be it's gonna be interesting to try and work out all the logistics of doing this as kind of an employment opportunity. Which is never something that I really ever considered. I started doing this because I was really, really bored one day. And I saw somebody else playing and doing LPs. And I was like, you know what? I play video games like 50 hours a day anyways. Which is pretty impressive considering there's only 24 hours in a day. Better him than... Ooh. Not a bad shot. Right up his nasal cavity. That'll clear the sinuses out. Anyways, as I was saying, I started LPing just... <sighs> really? Learn to aim better, noob. But anyways, as I was saying, if I could get back to it without somebody throwing an axe at me like a douche... I thought I had my shield up that whole time, too. I would have probably bitched and moaned and complained if I got myself killed. And so I've already forgotten what I was... Damn it. And so this is what happens... Oh, yeah. So I started LPing just as a hobby... And the concept of ever doing it as a job was never something... I didn't even know you could, like, do it as a job. I didn't realize that... I thought the advertisements on YouTube were just, like, advertisements. I didn't realize that that actually, like, gave... Contra I didn't realize that gave, like, content creators anything. And so, realizing that I could do this for a living, I may give it a shot. I think we're out of arrows now. Let's go ahead and retreat one more time. We're going to abandon it just so I can do a head count. Oh, they've only got 29 guys left. Let's go.
And this is probably going to be the final run. I don't see 28 guys holding off a massive siege like this. It should be okay. Oh, God. I can't find the key I want. I can't find the key I want. It's piano class all over again. C flat. No! Oh. My piano classes were the most stressful thing ever. I had, like, one of those old school classical teachers who was like, Nyah! Nyet! You must hit it like this, fortissimo! Like, just, like, really, like, getting irritated with the fact that I was, like, an eight-year-old that couldn't hit the right key. Like, really kind of a terrifying experience as a small child. Learning instruments, it almost scared me away from music altogether, and I think that's one of the big things that scares a lot of classical and, like, musicians away, is, like, when they're a little kid, they remember just having, like, terrible piano teachers. Or they remember having teachers that would just, like, shout at them and get frustrated with them, especially if you're in, like, that old, that old European style, where that's just, like, how they used to teach people to do music. It was just, like... Everything <laughs> everything you've ever done is wrong, and until you hit the C-sharp, I hate you. Like in that old classical style. And so I think anybody who's ever had a music teacher like that will attest that it can almost scare you away from making music. Like, I hated music class when I was a little kid. Oh, I hated it so much. If I had to go to piano class, I was so upset. I was just like, damn it. I hate piano class. Piano class is weak. And it wasn't because I didn't enjoy playing the piano. I loved playing the piano. It was just like your teacher didn't allow you to mess around. And I'm the kind of person where I teach myself to play musical instruments. And then I go back and I learn the theory later. Which can lead to some weird fingering problems and stuff like that. <laughs> There's your catchphrase of the day. But anyways, God, we are just getting butchered up there. How is this even happening? This is downright embarrassing. Call them back off the walls. Just let them get butchered. We are losing. I'm going to go have a look. And I know this is a terrible idea. There are those among you out there who are shaking your fists right now like, don't go do this. It'll probably work out. That guy's like, yay! Looks like he's diving to catch a volleyball or something. <laughs> Best beach day ever! <laughs> I got it! Set it up for the spike. Oh my god. The strangest things that happen with the physics engine in this game. I bet you guys step over here. Yeah, let your shield down to try and hit me. How awesome is that? Oh, I thought I got one, but nope, he got me. I think we finally made it to like their last contingency of upper tier troops. Luckily, they don't seem to be doing very well in the withering face of fire. Ooh, Sword Sister tried to take me out, but ended up getting took herself. And the reason I'm doing this is because they lower their shields when I'm doing this, so I'm kind of like saving us time. I'm using my body as its own personal bait. If I get killed here, I will most assuredly be hoisting myself up by my own petard. <laughs> That's a funny word. That's a real funny word. Like, I was reading in a book, like, I read a lot of joke books, and I read a lot of, like, how-to-write comedy type stuff, because it's conducive, and it helps me create content here on YouTube, and it helps me make these little diatribes and, like, notice little funny things, and Petard has, like, all of the fundamental elements of a funny word. We're out of arrows again. Alright, everybody in. We're just gonna do this the hard way now. Only got like six guys left. If we end up taking like a hundred losses right here, I'm gonna be really, really upset. He's gonna be our team cheerleader. Like, yay! Let's see if I can take something here. Oh, no, no, no. There we go. I'm trying to get this to work. I'm not, not really sure, like, the screenshot that I'm. It's like he's doing like a diving combat hug now. He's just like, oh, super hug. You are the best queen ever. And I'm like, I know, I know. I know, bitch. Get back in line. Anyways, I think we're about done here. And we took a bunch of captives too, which is pleasurable. You know, lose a lot of troops. What do I want? I'll take the master archers. I'll take the sharpshooter. Take the sergeant, and what else do we have? 
foot man. No, I do not want your foot man. I'll take the man at arms. I'll take the crossbowman and the infantry. The mama luke. Definitely take the knight. I still wish that there was a command just to convert these into garrison because that would really help you when you're starting out with a new castle. It would give it like a baseline group of guys that could just sit there and defend it. That's one of those commands that I always wish that they had and that I really hope will make an appearance in Bannerlord. God, I am so worried about getting excited about Bannerlord because Mountain Blade has gotten so popular at this point, I really hope they don't change too much. I think that's the only way that you could mess up Bannerlord is just by changing the fundamental theory of the game too much, at which point it will no longer be Mountain Blade. So worried. So worried. But I know. I know deep down. I have faith. I'm really right, kind of falling back on the hope that it won't happen. I bet it'll be okay. Sure. We'll leave everybody else there. Not a lot of loot, unfortunately. My lady, we have taken Ikamur. Let's... We're going to defer the appointment. And so we've taken Ikamur, finally. And so I think our big goal right now... In our rapidly expanding kingdom. I'm going to go ahead and break off the campaign. They gave us some basic troops to run with, but not nearly enough. And as I was worried, this is actually kind of a... Oh, you get Ada Kulun, too. Kind of a weird connecting you right there that they've got for the landscape. And so I do have some stuff to give out. I'll probably give Ikamur to myself like I always do and then spend like an hour in between episodes recruiting men so that I can hold it. Like a pee on a road trip, just trying to hold it. I am slightly worried that we may get hit back very shortly. And so let me... I'm going to place as many troops here as I can just to kind of defer our opponent from doing anything stupid here. Keep the night. Because my plansies right now is to come back and I should probably keep all these lower tier guys with me so that they upgrade. My plan is to swing back up to Singechi and grab my knights. So there it is. There's my 59 knights. Which I think actually puts them down to like kind of a precarious amount of guardsmen as well. 147 will work for right now. Might be a good time. What do we have in Ikamur? And our truce just expired too, so we may get declared on by Vagirs pretty soon. Let's run off him. Looks like Akadan Noyan. And so, as always, whenever I'm commanding a large cavalry force, there's really no point setting up a giant charge if all you have is cavalry. I mean, you could like you could feasibly wait for the combat to end where it's going to end, but we're up against Kurgis right now, which means this whole thing's going to turn into a giant Zerg ball mob of horses, anyways. I always hate how chaotic these battles are. It's difficult for me to keep my mind on the commentary because specifically there's just like so much happening on screen where there's this many horsemen around. You never know when you're going to catch a lance. That's the big problem is I'm always on the lookout for a lance and so because my focus is completely and totally on the game, I'm not necessarily aware of like any incoming threats with regards to big old pointed pieces of wood like that one right there that is now embedded deeply within my ribs. You're going to make this into one of those battles, aren't you? The Kurgis just aren't going to let this one end. Ah, oh, well, what can you do sometimes? So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stand guard next to Ikamur. Eventually, I assume they will sue for peace. I don't know. It may or may not happen. They're so far gone at this point that I think they may just kind of live in a perpetual state of raiding. And Where were all you guys like three seconds ago? That was weird. Is that the last one? Looks like we got one more off this way somewhere. Probably hiding behind a tree. 
hoping not to get annihilated, just crouching behind a rock, just like, I hope they don't notice me! Oh my god, the slaughter! Okay, and so the last little tree-hugging enemy has been annihilated by our knights. You, sir, are my prisoner now. Because my goal in all this is to bleed them out if I can. So let's handle the distribution of land before anything else terrible happens. If I have to go back over there and defend it, I will, but we need to give land out. Let's take a look at our reports, and we're going to go by Lords by Relation. And we'll look at the people that need to be given land first. So Stamar, Plyce. Okay, so Stamar and Plyce need a fife before anybody else. Let's go to our castle. What's up, ladies? And while we're here... Let's go ahead and... There's a quarrel between Stamar and Clargus. Okay, so I'm going to go see if I can talk them into not hating each other anymore. And then we need to allocate all of our corresponding lands. Make myself the Lord of Ikimer. And then we will give Ada Kulun. I could give somebody Singechi now that I have two big castles. That might be an interesting idea after I move the garrison around. Give the castle to somebody. So Ada Kulun can go to, I think it was Stamar and Plyce that were all grumpy. Okay. And so now that we've got everybody sort of assigned out, Clargus and Lazalit are up next. Let me do that, actually. I'm going to give somebody Sungechi because I don't feel like guarding it anymore. Let me go grab all of my troops out of it, and I'll just migrate my garrison from one spot to the other. If I lose Sungechi, it's not even that large of a deal. Like, I don't care if I lose Sungechi. It's just one of those little things that you got to look at the value of whatever the target is that you're holding. And I would rather, like, move all of my garrisons over to Ikimer to defend that and make sure that we hold the big city versus holding the little one. So let's ride down to Sungechi. Okay, so now that they've made peace with the Serenets, I forgot to tell you that the Kurgates are engaged in war with Vagirs, the Serenids, and now us. So they were in a really, really precarious situation for such a large faction. What I need to do now is just grab everybody out of here, and we're just going to migrate them. And this might take a while. This is going to be like one of those one-click-at-a-time type deals. I don't know if it's worth it. To transfer some of the other troops over. Whoa. Is that a 31,000? Oh my god. We just made 34,000 dinars from Ikimer. I wonder if that's all back rents. Wow. Or if it's one of the richest places on the map. It's going to be one or the other. So now that we're in Ikimer... Let me upgrade anybody that got upgraded during the ride. So yeah, there it is right there. A couple of camp followers. Let me... God. Alright, so we're going to drop all these guys off here. And you should probably just break the episode. I, I'm not going to break the episode off. Like, I'm probably going to play for another minute or two. But if you guys want to leave right now, I won't blame you. I won't be that like lecturer that's just like, oh, you're leaving? Like, I saw a stand-up comedian one time who got so mad that somebody got up to go to the bathroom during his thing, and he knew that they had... He knew that they had speakers in the bathroom. He's just messing with them the whole time. Even while they were taking a dump. I was like, wow, that's messed up, man. You gotta dump, you gotta dump. I mean, I don't blame him, man. It's biological function. You gotta do what you gotta do. Take all of them. And so I think doing what we're doing right now is probably a smart idea. All things considered. I don't think babysitting Sengechi anymore is going to help us. We've got other things to worry about, basically. This does raise the point that we may have to fall back and defend this location. I will also take all the prisoners so that I can make some money off them in just a minute. We 
There we are. And if it ends up being like one of the most prosperous cities, I may move my court here instead. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Managing the garrison. I don't know how many people we have. I think we've got to be approaching probably like the 200 mark here, which is right about where you want to be with large cities. If you wanted to be ultra safe, you could go with 400, at which point the AI will more than likely never attack the location ever again. I'm sort of intrigued to see how much money we're going to be making from this location. I'm going to keep the men-at-arms with me. Simply because they're going to upgrade into my primary unit force anyways. Keep the marksman with me too. Why not? Up to 237 here. Okay. Kyrgyz give us a peace agreement. Fantastic. So we have peace now. Which means that I don't have to worry about guarding any of these locations anymore. Which is a great spot to break off the episode. So my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me at the Nerd Castle for another episode of Mountain Blade Warband. I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Take care out there everybody and I do.